Okay, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Eric Forge. I'm the founder and CEO of Calvary. So Calvary is on a mission to bring all capital markets on chain. And so very ambitious uh, uh, vision there and uh, working backwards, we're presenting to, to you today the first step of this kind of very exciting roadmap. The first product we're, we're rolling out is called MultiSwap. And uh, as a founder, I will be giving a keynote tomorrow. So 4, 4 10 p.m. tomorrow. But today I wanted to kind of highlight my team. As a workshop, we want to be a bit educational to, to see like what is multi-swap, what is special about multi-swap. I can dig into the math, but I don't know many people came here to hear about mathematics or mathematics lecture. So like I thought what we do is kind of go through the team where we have very diverse uh, background. So we got um, Iamans doing community for us. He's our one man uh, focus group. <laughs> he's, he's, he's a great guy. Uh, he's really plugged into what's happening in, in crypto. Uh, Caleb's our product developer, so you'll hear from product perspective what makes MultiSwap uh, special, what kind of UX challenges we had, and how we worked through that. And then Julie's our CFO, uh, talking from a, she's, she's CFO, but also former like trader, so she's very experienced in trading and, and finance, ex Deloitte uh, CPA, et cetera. So I think with that, like I'll just hand it over to my team so you can hear uh, from us, we're, we're at booth number four, so please come by if you, if you want to see us in more detail and hear more detail. But for now, we'll just go through and um, introduce MultiSwap by my team. So. Yeah, hi everyone, I'm Julie, the CFO of Calvary, as Eric said. Um, so basically, we're launching a decentralized exchange, an automated market maker. So prior to the emergence of blockchain, yeah, I'm sure many of you are familiar of like TD Ameritrade, Charles Schwab, Fidelity, Interactive Brokers. So basically those are, you know, exchanges, you know, centralized exchanges that basically do a matching of buy and sell orders. So for example, like Apple stock, you know, you'll have orders come in that want to buy Apple stock at a certain price and you have orders that come in that want to sell Apple stock at a certain price. And then there's a matching of those orders that takes place. So that's kind of started to be brought on chain, as you guys know, with Dex a lot. That has been a big, you know, product that's been brought on chain now for CLOPS, Central Limit Order Books. So we are an AMM, an automated market maker, which is similar to Uniswap, which I think most of you guys would be familiar of, with. And with Uniswap, they have pair pools. So you'll have two tokens in a pool, and you have to provide 50% liquidity of token A in the pool, and then 50% of token B, and then you can receive an LP token. With multi-swap, we have an unlimited number of tokens in the pool. So, you know, we have different math, like Uniswap uses the constant product formula. We have different math based on Black Shoals and other methods that you know, we've engineered that we are allowed to now have more than, you know, you've seen like, you've seen like six to eight assets in a pool with balancer and curve, but we're able to have an unlimited number of assets. So what that allows you to do is build e exchange traded funds or index funds. So for our test net that's live right now on the Fuji test network, um, we have a mock-up of the S&P 500. So our LP token for the pool is the shares of SPY. And then we have about 507 or so S&P stocks. So like Apple, Walmart, Tesla. And what you basically can do is you can, you know, and you, this is just hypothetical because obviously stocks and stuff are not on chain yet. But what you can do is take, if you own Tesla or Apple or Boeing stock, you can tr trade those into the pool, and, which basically is like staking, like at Uniswap or other DEXs. So you can put those into the pool and receive an LP token in exchange. So you basically stake those assets and the LP token will earn a percentage of all the trading fees in the pool. And there's no limit to the number of tokens that you put into the pool or receive out. So you can put one token, so single-sided, true single-sided staking. You can put one token into the pool, and this works for crypto assets too. You can put one token and receive the LP token. You could put five tokens, you could put 10 tokens, and there's no limit. You're not, you're not you know, limited at all. And then you could receive the LP token, or you could receive any other tokens in the pool. So if you want Apple stock, you know, and you have Apple stock and Boeing and you want Tesla, you can do that swap or five stocks for three stocks. It, there's no limit. And the same for crypto. So if you wanted, if you have ETH and you want a Vox, you can make that swap. And, you know, you could do ETH for a Vox, Doge, USDC, whatever you want to do. You're, just, you're not limited because of the math, you know, behind our AMM, you know, our liquidity curve. So 
That, that's pretty cool. And then on Uniswap, like wrapped Ethereum, for example, is fragmented, you know, among like over 400 pair pools with multi-swap, all of that liquidity for like wrapped Ethereum, for example, would be available for every single trade. So you, you're not having this fragmented liquidity, you know, issue where if you have a wrapped Ethereum Doge pool or a wrapped Ethereum, you know, uh, BTC pool, for example, that Ethereum over here is not available for the trade over here, you know. So in our pool, it's all brought together. So you're getting that unified liquidity benefit, which gives you a better price. And then another thing I want to mention too, like on Uniswap, for example, you have different prices, you know, for the same asset in all these different pools. On our platform, you will have one price for each asset. So I think that's a big step up. Try and think, was there anything else? You know, like, so for liquidity providers, you're actually gonna earn a yield here. You know, Uniswap right now is basically subsidizing transactions for traders. So the LPs, every time a trader makes a trade there, they're getting a price that's kind of partially stale. So the LPs that have provided liquidity into the pool are subsidizing each trade right now at where the price you know, that they're giving the traders, that price isn't the proper price for the liquidity curve. So that's why you know, we've talked to a lot of liquidity providers on other DEXs and they're like, it's so hard for us to make money once we stake because, because of this bad math issue. So we've solved that, so we, we you know, we're still working out the details and everything, but we pretty much feel we have solved impermanent loss. So that's like very huge for this industry because that's, that's been a major problem. So people will be able to stake, and then they'll be able to earn a percentage of the trading fees, and you know, much better than what's out there now. And you'll have this benefit of unified liquidity, which it gives you definitely a better price because you get the full benefit of all, you know, wrapped Ethereum's liquidity, no longer fragmented among 400 pair pools, no more pair pools. So all in one pool. And then when you provide liquidity in stake, you know, say you had one token, so you took your AVAX, you staked it, you know, to receive our LP token. You, you now own shares in a decentralized ETF, basically, of crypto. So our first product when we go live, it will be crypto assets. So we're gonna take, you know, the, you know, 15, 20, maybe blue chip crypto assets and, and start that when we go live. And we're hoping to do that. We're working through some regulatory issues now and stuff, trying to get licenses and, and stuff right now. But we're hoping this summer that we'll be able to have that live for some, you know, overseas and stuff until we can work out stuff in the United States. So um, i trying to think, anything else? Good? Uh, I think okay. that, that's yeah. good. Thank you, Julie. Sounds good. Yeah, thank you guys for attending, really appreciate it. Yeah, so it's great. I mean, as a founder, like you start with like one person, right? So like Calvary started with me and then like to see like Julie and the team being able to enunciate oh. this thing, it's, it's just so a happy moment for me to, to see Julie talking about this. So, so thank you, Julie. I think oh. like next we're gonna let um, Caleb, oh. yeah. Caleb talk about the, from his perspective. Hello, his, everyone. His product oh. sure. and product perspective. Hey guys. How's it going? I'm Caleb. Um, I'm sort of leading product design and front-end development for Multiswap. Um, so, do you guys like get what? Do you guys get what Multiswap is? Okay, TLDR. It's Uniswap, but you can trade 10 tokens for 40. You can trade one for 100. Uh, we actually had a user do a 340 token swap on our testnet in one transaction, um, and this is because yeah, the tokens are in one pool. Um, so yeah, um, I just want to talk about. Um, some like unique UX aspects of uh, sort of rethinking the swap. Um, so in our case, like we, the UI between um, trading and providing liquidity is the same. We just have one interface. So providing liquidity is as simple as just buying the LP token, um, which is pretty cool. Um, and yeah, you can construct that in, in different multi-swaps. Um, when you sell assets, you're actually buying allocation of different assets due to the nature of a multi-swap. Um, yeah, uh, essentially we have like a long list of assets. Um, here you see stocks, um, just for representation. Um, so all the stocks you see on screen um, are in one pool. Like these are all in one liquidity pool. Um, and then the S&P 500 token at the top is an LP token that represents the value of all the tokens in the pool. Um, and so you can sort of think of that as like a decentralized ETF if you were to just hold the pool token. Um, and then, yeah, you can trade in between it and all the tokens in the pool seamlessly. 
And um, yeah, we, we sort of ended up with like a UX, almost like a like an Amazon shopping cart where you just like add items, add buy and sell orders to your to your swap. And um, there's no limit to the amount of tokens you can swap outside of how many tokens are in the pool. Um, so yeah, it's, just, it's a pretty, yeah, it was pretty fun kind of <laughs> designing this. Yeah, come, know, like, come to our booth and, and try yeah. a multi-swap. We keep joking, like, everybody's multi-swapping, so, like, come in and try a multi-swap. Yeah, sure. I just want to highlight, so, like, you know, one of the things we like, and, and it's funny, like, Caleb's, like, counting clicks. Like, how easy is it to <laughs> yeah. actually get going? So, like, where everybody thinks, like, Uniswap is quite easy, but we're, like, fewer, like, Uniswap yeah. is, like, seven clicks. Uniswap. So like, we, we can get swapped yeah. in four or five. So Uniswap so. is seven clicks. We can do it in three for, like, a two-token swap. So, yeah, like, so if you're nerded out about UX, <laughs> it's like... Yeah, the UX is yeah, cool. It's so cool. It inspired kind of like an Amazon cart, you know, add to cart, add to cart, and swap. So you can actually literally add to cart, add to cart, swap in, in three clicks. And, and it's just as easy to do, like, a 10 to 1 swap as it is to, to do 1 and 1. So the, UI, the UX, we're really happy with this. Yeah. So please come by the booth and, and, and try it out yourself. Yeah, and if anyone wants a demo, I have my laptop. I can pull it up. Try, oh, yeah. try to multi-swap after, <laughs> just I'll be in the back. So, Everybody yeah. multi-swap. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you, Caleb. Next up, we have Ayman. Ayman is like a, a very loved person in the Avalanche community, the Avalanche community. He was like brought up on stage at the Avalanche house in Brooklyn by Devon Ferrer, former CMO. And like, he's just getting into the hearts of everybody here in, in, in Avalabs. He's actually still in high school. <laughs> so like, you'll, you'll be shocked at, at his knowledge. Like he's very knowledgeable about DeFi and, and, and chains, and et cetera, and all the different protocols. So we're really happy to have uh, uh, Ayman with us. And uh, so he'll talk from his perspective as our kind of one man focus group. <laughs> what is multi-swap and what's special about it? Uh, yeah, hey guys, uh, I'm, I'm Ayman, and like Eric said, I'm basically the, the community guy, the community outreach guy, the guy that will answer any of your questions on Twitter, Telegram, Discord, all that stuff. So um, what really intrigues me about Cavalry and its multi-swap product is the LP token. So like uh, Julie was saying before, our LP token is sort of a decentralized ETF of all the tokens within it. And by doing that, you're, by staking the LP token, you're basically holding a perfectly rebalancing portfolio. And what that means is that the LP token actually suffers from 0% impermanent loss against a perfectly rebalancing portfolio, which is, you know, that's kind of beautiful in a way because now you're earning fees as an LP while holding a portfolio that you might have held before. And this brings up a kind of funny point because during the development of our product, we were actually thinking about charging LPs a fee to LP because the privilege of accessing a perfectly rebalancing portfolio is one that financial institutions are paying other, other services to do for them. And our LP token actually opens up a whole world of new opportunities for protocols that might want to build on us. So one of these uh, opportunities that I would like to discuss today is that um, some protocols could integrate our LP tokens as collateral for um, uh, over collateralized loans. And I guess what gets me really excited is we could have a pool with multiple different stable coins inside of it. And the LP token for that pool would function sort of like a money market fund, which is tracking all the stable coins within it. So we basically create the ultimate stable coin without assuming risk from any one individual stable coin or any of the deposits that are within that stable coin pool. And in addition to ha holding that perfect stable coin, you're also earning the fees off of the trades that occur within that pool, which is honestly really cool. Um, I, I guess in a way you could say that we're the first natively yield earning stable coin that's not relying on any of the Ponzanomics that we've seen over the past few years in crypto. Um, yeah, so this creates really cool case scenarios. For example, you could deposit that LP token into a protocol like Abracadabra, and you would have a self-repaying loan, which they could then use to, again, farm that LP somewhere else. Um, yeah, uh, th basically our LP tokens create a and a decentralized ETF that anyone can come in and start once we open up um, pool making for anyone. 
And the way that we would do that is we would be linking pools together through the LP token of another pool. So you wouldn't just be able to come into Multiswap and create your own pool without contributing to our main pool. So what that means is that once you're creating your own pool, you have to provide liquidity to the major pool to basically open up shop. And what that does is it allows us to you know, gain more liquidity on our main pools, make sure that our um, basically spin-off pools aren't anything fraudulent or looking for, looking for trouble, basically. And uh, in, our, in our future, we can, a few years down the line, we can see us trading, you know, tokenizing everything. We can tokenize stocks, metals, currencies, commodities, housing, NFTs, all, all that stuff can be traded through a multi-swap because you don't have to settle in the dollar. For example, for Forex, um, it's actually really cool because instead of having to go from Euro to Yen and in between having to settle in the dollar to do that trade, in a pool with all the world's assets or all the world's currencies in it, you could go directly from one currency to another currency. And again, the LP token for that world currency fund would literally be like a, a world stable coin in a way because you have the value of all the world's top currencies in one pool. And I, I mean, at least personally, that's something I've never heard of before. And uh, that's, that's some, some real world, you know, life-changing opportunity for people. And, and, and that LP token is also earning fees as well. So you get the best of, of all possible worlds. Um, I mean, our, our LP token is, is really unique. Uh, Caleb has done a great job engineering the UI and the front end to make it so that LPing is not a separate, complicated interface like other protocols have. It's just two clicks. You know, you sell one token and you buy the LP token, and voila, you have access to a perfectly rebalancing portfolio in two clicks. So yeah, um, that's that's all I wanted to cover today, and uh, I hope you guys see the value in the LP token that these pools are creating and you know maybe you guys have some ideas that you might want to implement using that LP token as well um, you know you could theoretically uh, balance the risk of that LP token by you know going short on the tokens within it and then you're holding basically a, a fee printer <laughs> so yeah I, I mean there's a there really is a, a whole world of possibilities that these LP tokens open up and it really simplifies trades to be able to swap multiple assets that you have to multiple assets that you want to have. Or maybe all your dust in your wallet, you could swap into having an LP token, which tracks the ecosystem that you want to be in. Yeah, yeah, great. I mean, so like, I, I think you heard our, our team mention something I, I want to add to, to what you're talking about is like um, this concept of a decentralized ETF. I, I think. I think that's pretty cool, but it's it's not just a decentralized, it's a new kind of animal that doesn't exist in TradFi. It's an ETF where you can swap the constituents. So you could buy shares of the, the ETF using any of the assets in it. You can swap any number of tokens in, any number of tokens out. If you think about that from like a traditional asset manager uh, perspective, you can, uh, like an like a equity mutual fund or equity mutual fund manager or something, they can rebalance their entire asset portfolio in a single interaction. Like 340 tokens can handle like the largest equity portfolio I'm aware of. You know, so like we can really do kind of cool rebalancing that also opens up opportunities for very uh, kind of creative arbitrage opportunities. Now you have like multiple top tokens you can, you can arbitrage against simultaneously. Uh, and you know what, what I'm is talking about is like how to use the LP token like this is just step one like so like we eventually want to to accommodate all capital markets so we have a very beautiful roadmap where like now we're doing spot market but you can't talk about capital markets without talking about fixed income you can't talk about capital markets without talking about bonds and so there's no such concept of a crypto yield curve at the moment so like our next primitive will be building, say, a term structure for the kind of futures market. So like we'll, we'll, we'll extend the concept of AMM into the time dimension so that we can start getting uh, yield curves and start working into um, fixed income markets. And if you think about it, 
like I've been saying, like you can use LP token as collateral in a lending protocol, but we can actually build our own lending protocol from those two primitives with the, with the kind of Legos that we're building. Spot market first, that's what multi-swap is. Next would be a kind of futures market with AMM spread across the term structure. Step three would be a derivatives option pricing market using the same, uh, the same liquidity. So we, this kind of concept of unified liquidity, we can actually get these Lego pieces building on top of the same liquidity, which is really a very strong foundation for building pretty much all of capital markets on chain, and you, I don't want to get too much into it, but just if you think about our name, Calvary, like our North Star is actually reinsurance. So everything we're doing here is building the foundations that we think is needed to do reinsurance and risk transfer, which is kind of a, one of the most complicated corners of the capital markets. So if we can crack that, then we crack pretty much everything. So it's kind of like we had this very ambitious uh, kind of, let's capture this complicated part of the, the, the capital markets. But oh no, the DeFi primitives are not there yet today. So let's build the primitives that we need to build uh, the, this, uh, the whole capital markets, including risk transfer and reinsurance. So yeah, so borrowing lending is very easy to do once we do our next step. And this would be a new concept. It's not like an Aave or a compound. It would be a totally new kind of um, uh, a borrowing lending with a term structure built into it. So like there's no interest rate assumptions. It's actually market driven. And so I think uh, one other thing I wanted to mention, uh, Caleb, is like building on, like, like I mentioned, we, we want to work with builders. So like we're actually building an SDK where you can build your own front end. So we want to work with builders uh, to interact with our pools so we can start layering things on top. So, so that's something that we've started putting together now. It should be ready soon. So if anybody is interested in building on top of uh, this multi-swap, I'd love to talk to you about that too. So, yeah, and um, yeah, I, I think we've we've basically covered the educational content for today that we hope to get through in our workshop. And we we understand that multi-swap is something totally new and something that really doesn't exist or hasn't existed at least in the in the crypto ecosystem in the past few years. So we, we really wanted to allot um, a little bit of our time today to go after any questions that the audience might have about maybe the math aspect of multi-swap, the front end aspect of multi-swap, the accounting aspect of multi-swap, or, or generally, you know, any, any questions that you might have. So um, yeah, if you guys would raise your hands and maybe we could pass the mic to you guys and get a question answered if you have. Or if you don't have any, that's fine too. It's better for us. <laughs> yeah, hi. Probably a really basic question. Um, but just thinking about when you guys launch, let's say you have a pool that has 10 assets in it. One of the assets goes to zero, right? What keeps someone from just dumping a ton of that asset and withdrawing? Because if it's a Uniswap pool, right, basically, that Uniswap is two tokens. They're going to dump the one that went to zero, and all the good tokens are going to be taken out. So what happens? Yeah, so, so in that case, so like it's not Uniswap pool. It's not a constant product market maker. We're, we're, the mathematics is a little different, so we're, we're based on value. So it's a, it, like we can get more maybe detailed later, but like there's, a per, there's a shift in perspective from sh transferring uh, reserves, token numbers, to shift to trading token value. And so that's kind of like the secret sauce, how we can do 10,000 tokens in a single pool because it's value going in and value going out. And we impose this concept of self-financing. So no value is created or destroyed in a transaction. So if you have, if you think about it, like AMM is just a portfolio. Like people don't think of Uniswap as a portfolio, but it really is. It's really two assets in a portfolio with equal weights. So 50-50 portfolio, if one of them goes down, then uh, you know, the price is going to go down as people dump into it. But the thing is, I think uh, Julie mentioned a little bit, we can show mathematically that Uniswap is actually using stale prices. So there's a lag where we're actually leading. So like if you dump a bunch, the prices, you're gonna trade at the, the price, the low price. And so if you do that, then the price will actually go down faster, which means that the opportunity to dump is lower. So like, if the price goes down, that's what happened because the price went down. So we can't stop the price from going down. So the LP token would experience a loss 
because one of the tokens went to zero. So you, there's nothing, that's markets. That's how it works. So pre presumably when someone's coming to sell that token, you guys are checking prices somewhere else. No, before no, you there's, do, no. there's no Oracle. It's all okay. built in. But the thing is, it's, it's based, if you think about AMMs, there's a pre-trade state of the AMM before you trade. That means you have pre-trade prices. And then there's a post-trade state of the AMM after you trade. And the execution price should be somewhere in between. Right, so it turns out that Uniswap is the midpoint, which means they're weighted uh, on the stale price, 50%, and the new price. We're weighted 100% on the new price, which means, like Julie was mentioning, we're not subsidizing trades at all. So that's why we get, like, in a single transaction after providing liquidity, the movement in the value of the LP token exactly matches the movement of a HODL, which means for that one transaction, there's zero impermanent loss for that. And so, like, I think... Dumping it is just natural, but it, it won't be impacted as much as, say, a Uniswap pool would be because they're using the pre-trade price. Understood. Okay. One more, if I may, is just when yeah. you guys launch, is the pool going to be permission? Like, do you guys decide the tokens? Do users decide? Can users make their own pool? Yeah, great question. So the initial launch for us, like every startup, you just want to get to market as soon as possible. So like the initial pool that we will launch initially is a fixed pool. But then, like uh, Ayman was mentioning, for different pools, like the way we think about the pools, it's all ETFs. Like ETF market has different, you can have a stable coin ETF, you can have a native coin ETF, and so you can have all these kind of ETFs, which means that uh, in principle, we should have permissionless token listing available, and we will, just not on day one. And the, the way to do that would be, you cannot, the old pools are immutable, which means you cannot add or remove tokens to an existing pool. So if you have like a new token you want to list, it would have to go into a new pool and you could create that uh, new pool permissionlessly, but one of the assets in that new pool has to be an LP token of an existing pool. So you have to provide liquidity to an existing pool in an existing asset to get the LP token so that you can create your new pool. So you're actually putting capital at risk by listing a token. So if that dumps in. You know. I see it, because the next question was going to be, how does that not fragment the liquidity? But I see. I yeah, see. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So it, the, the LP token links the new pools together. So. Don't you have any scaling concerns? Because in traditional automated marking functions, as you said, you have two assets, and one balances with the other one. But if your intention is to put n assets in the, in the multi-swap, mm -hmm. I guess the math involved in the pricing will get very complex. No, um, it's actually quite simple. Yeah. Can you go over it? Yeah, I, I, I don't know if we have time to go in here, okay. but like I can say there's three principles. Like, come to see my talk tomorrow. I'll go sure. into it a little bit more. But like, first, the assets value is equal to liability value. That's like common for all AMMs. Second, you have a pre post trade weights are known. Like, Uniswap post trade weights are known. It's always 50 50. So, the third is different for us than it is for Uniswap. Third one is the self-financing concept. So um, let's see. I can, last one, can you repeat like the where was I going? Your question again? Yeah, I wanted to know about the scalability because. Oh yeah. So so what we call we call unified liquidity, which means like, it, say wrapped Ethereum for example, like on, on Uniswap, it's across 400 tokens. All the TVL for wrapped Ethereum is available for any swap that involves. There's no fragmentation of that. So 100% of the liquidity for any given token is available for any swap. There's no, it's a good question. We got, actually got some similar questions today, which, which are good questions. But yeah, there's, there's no limit to scalability. Like it just vertically scales. The more liquidity you put for a token, the more is available for any swap. It doesn't mean like I have 500 tokens, that liquidity has to be fragmented 500 times. No, it's 100% is available for every swap. Okay, thank you. Hmm. Okay. I think everyone's probably got about 10 questions, so it seems very revolutionary. <laughs> I, I didn't understand how you could have 100% of the liquidity available for all tokens. If someone wants to pull out token A, then how can they pull out more token A than, than is available? And no, they can't, yeah. So like, let's, say, let's say we have 500 tokens and token A is in there and you want to pull out token A, how do you pull it out? First, you need to put something in to pull it out. So what are you going to put in? You have to put in like token B or the LP token. So just one of the existing other tokens 
you have to put in to, to get the token A out. And if, if the trade that you're doing is large compared to the total reserve, the price slippage starts to get severe. So like if there's 100 million liquidity for token A and you're swapping 1 million, there's very little slippage, it's, it's fine. But if you start swapping like 99 million, then you're gonna experience severe slippage. So the price will actually change based on the, si the size of your trade. So there's no way to take out like more than, than what's in there. I don't know okay. if that helps. Thank you, yeah, I, saw, I sort of see it. Um, Happy to uh, talk later Second question, on, going back to the, going back to the um, price question oh. where you said uh, Uniswap use a mid price and uh, you'll use a post trade price. As a selfish trader, would I therefore not be better going to Uniswap to get a better price? You would be better going to Uniswap because the LP is subsidizing your trade effectively, so you can get a, a little bit of better price if the TVL is the same. So like if you set up the same TVL there and same TVL here, then you would get a slightly better price, which you would prefer to go to Uniswap, but that's not the situation. The situation is that liquidity on Uniswap is actually spread across 10 or 100 tokens. So the, fragment, the liquidity there is fragmented. So we would actually, for apples to apples, we'd have to take the entire liquidity for that token and compare that to our swap, which would mean we'd actually have a lot more liquidity available, which means the capital efficiency is much higher. So like for equal, equal TVL on one pool, then you'd have a slightly better uh, price. But the reality is we have one pool, Uniswap has 10 or 100. So liquidity, so if you compare on, on that basis, much more capital efficient. Thank you. So, okay, I think we're out of time, so <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you.